This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 30 of the Jumble Think Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. We explore the ideas and dreams behind some of the leading entrepreneurs from around the world. Along the way, we will give you some tips and ideas of how you can chase your own big ideas and dreams and change the world around you. Our guest on today's episode is Kimmy and Pua. They are the founders of Best Life Ever. Super fun episode ahead. More about them in a moment. Our guest on Thursday's episode is Johnny Cooper, the founder of Johnny Hates Marketing. He's a British entrepreneur, piano player, international racing driver, and so much more. Super fun episode. Make sure to check out our episode on Thursday with Johnny Cooper. Now let's jump into today's episode with Kimmy and Pua, the founders of Best Life Ever. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host and so glad that you've joined us for today's episode with Kimmy and Pua, the founders of Best Life Ever. It's going to be awesome, but before we jump in, I wanna encourage you wherever you're listening to this podcast, Click that subscribe button. If you are listening through jumblethink.com, I encourage you, find a new home for listening to podcasts. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and SoundCloud. So many other places, too. That way, you can click the subscribe button over there and catch every episode with the incredible guests of the JumbleThink podcast. Now, let's learn a little bit more about today's guests, Kimmy and Pua, the founders of Best Life Ever. My name is Kimi, and my business partner here is Pua, and together we are Best Life Ever. We are podcasters, and uh, we we really believe in, and and also business coaches, and we help entrepreneurs to build and grow online businesses from a foundation of productivity for more freedom, more fun, and for their best life ever. We probably have always deep down known that this was what we wanted to do with our lives. But Kimi and I actually met mm, about five or six years ago as fitness trainers. And we worked together at a gym where we were given us a certain script to kind of guide the people there through their health and fitness journey. And through that guidance, we ended up doing research on our own to support them to help them to find out why maybe they were following what we were prescribing to them, but not seeing results. So we really started to dive into the world of productivity, of overall kind of holistic health and wellness. And we realized that there's so much more to finding fulfillment within yourself than just the physical. So that's really where we connected and and started this journey. Um, And, you know, our company has taken on many forms. We've evolved quite a bit over the last few years, but we definitely have pulled this out of each other and really helped each other to find what lights us up and what drives us. And we're really excited that it's taken shape in Best Life Ever. For us, it is so meaningful when we get to connect with somebody that's had a really, a really big dream, but maybe the rest of the world has, you know, the society or whatever it is, the people in their circle have told them that maybe it's not quote unquote realistic. (laughs) And through working with us and just talking with us and being exposed to other people in our community that are following their big dreams, that they start to think, wow, actually I I can do this. And seeing that there's like this moment (laughs) when this, you see the light in their eye and you see the sparkle start to happen all around them (laughs) and it's magical for us. And it is what gives us purpose every single day and to be doing what we love and helping other people to do what they love. I mean, that, that to us is our best life ever. And we truly believe that when, when, people with big dreams, you know, dreams to serve the world in these incredible ways. Um, when they push through that point where they feel like, oh, like maybe it would just be easier to get a real job or, oh, you know, I say real, real job in quotes or, you know, do something that doesn't light them up. When they push through that moment, that is 
everything. And we feel that that is what is going to seriously change the world. People following that and pushing through and supporting each other to get to that point. One of our friends, actually, we talk about this all the time, and I I always want to make sure we don't take credit for it because it's brilliant, and I wish that we could, but we can't. Uh, And one of our friends, we were actually doing a podcast interview with her, and we asked her what she... Uh, what guidance she gives people who come to her and they say, I know I'm meant to do something amazing, but I don't know what it is. And her question is, what breaks your heart? Because that's a really clear indication of what will fulfill you and what kind of work you could do in this world to make it a more beautiful place. And right now, more than ever, in my opinion, is the time for people to step into their power and to create this this world of this, this, this network of people doing amazing things and healing the world and providing a service, providing a solution to the problems that exist, the more people that we can encourage and kind of hold their hand and bring them into this world of entrepreneurship where they are feeling fulfilled and doing what they love, the more beautiful this world will be. And we we really need that right now. So it really lights us up to be able to uh, put ourselves in a position to bring this light and this service to the world. The challenge that I have right now, and it's it's almost laughable, is setting boundaries on when I stop working. <laughs> I like, I once I get into the groove, like I just love what we do so much that I I end up working 10, 12 hours in a day sometimes, and I can't stop. So, I mean, if that's my biggest challenge right now, then that's, to me, a really big blessing. But I'm really working to put parameters in place and do what we coach everybody else to do and, you know, be be productive and then turn it off and have some fun. The next big goal that we have for our business is really to just continue on uh, the path that that we've created for ourselves, especially this year. So we made a a really big shift in in our focus uh, in in January. We focused, uh, made a decision to focus less on corporate productivity coaching and really do what. Uh, follow what lights us up, and that is to work specifically with entrepreneurs, which led us to create our eight-week program, Broke Ass to Badass. And so now we're just really in this space of uh, finding those uh, inspired or uh, aspiring entrepreneurs that are really ready to dive in and make their big dreams a reality. And so for us, it's just getting the word out, continuing to uh, find people that are excited and, and ready and and spread the message. As Pua said, we're, we're on a mission to, to change the world through uh, people following their joy, following their soul, and doing what lights them up. In a moment, we'll be right back with our interview with Kimi and Pua. We wanted to let you know about two free resources over at jumblethink.com slash guide. We have two free guides. The first guide is how to know when you've found your dream. And the second guide is overcoming the unknown. Both of these guides will give you some helpful tips on how to become that dreamer, that idea maker that you've always longed to be. Simply swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. That's jumblethink.com slash guide to claim your free guides. Now let's jump into the interview portion of our conversation with Kimi and Pua, the founders of Best Life Ever. Hey, Kimi and Pua, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. Thanks for having us. So excited here. <laughs> you know, you you were talking at the beginning, sharing a little bit of your story, your passions, and, and I'm just like super excited about this episode. And one of the things that really stood out to me is this whole philosophy of helping people find fulfillment in life and really going past just the superficial, uh, whatever that is for them, uh, and going deep and really finding true fulfillment. Tell us a little bit about how your journey, how you discovered that for yourselves. Sure. Well, I think Pua and I always joke around that our our sort of secret mission, uh, the the mission statement that we have between the two of us is that we just don't like to feel like crap. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, and we want to help people not feel like crap, right? right like right. that's, that's um, it, we have this really um, shared uh, intolerance for 
feeling junk and feeling like we're not living to our potential. Right. And I think that's what drew us together as friends and then as coworkers and then as business partners. And so to both have that really embedded in our culture has been one of the things that has moved us forward and, and really created the business that we have. And we joke around too, we say like, be careful what you name your company, right? Because then it becomes this reminder every <laughs> single day of how you want to be living your life. So our company right. is best life ever. So it's this inner check. Are, are we living our best life ever? Every single moment we're asking ourselves that so that we can be in integrity with our business and our mission and our life. And so we will often say to each other, uh, you know, I don't really, okay, wait, are we living our best life ever <laughs> if we do this or if we do that? <laughs> so that's a great tip, right? Is like, think about what you name your company and let it, let it be this, uh, yeah, this reminder, this touchstone to help you connect to what you really believe in. That's so cool. And it's awesome because it's really, it, no matter what shape this business has taken, I mean, Best Life Ever still embodies all of the, all of the things that have been on our journey. So, you know, we started out doing, it was, you know, a podcast and it always will be because we love podcasting. Um, but we did start out with more kind of individual personal development. And then we moved into corporate coaching, right? So we did a lot of productivity, time and energy management for corporations and for, you know, we did executive coaching and we coached groups and teams within an organization. And now we're working with entrepreneurs, but throughout that evolution and reinvention, it's all fallen under the same concept, which is how does somebody create the processes and the routines and rituals to live their best life ever every day? And what we constantly have to remind people of is when you live your best life ever, it doesn't mean that you're a perfect human being. Right. It's not a perfect life. Yeah. It is a life that brings you back to a place of fulfillment and alignment and putting things in place that make sure that you are reminding yourself of that because we can get lost sometimes and that's okay. Yeah. As long as we have the tools to get back. Absolutely. And I think that's the thing is, is a lot of people think, and look at people that are, are, they look up to them and they say, hey, that's who I want to be like, or they have it all together and uh, they have everything that I want in life. And they look at these people and they see them as superhero, superhuman, mm. and often get lost in the fact that there's much more to the story than what is obvious. And that this journey for most of these people, uh, these, these people changing the world, is simply boiled down to a journey of being intentional about what they're doing. And I love how that that's really part of your DNA of, of as an organization that you're always asking that question and you're evolving what you're doing, you're changing it, you're growing it, and you're not afraid to do that uh, to get to the place that you want to go instead of stay in the place where you've been. Yeah, for sure. Reinvention is actually really important to us and we coach on it. We have an entire module on it in our course because it's, it really kind of, it, it's at the core of who we are meant to be as humans. Right. We're not meant to, you know, follow the same path our whole lives because we are, are meant to evolve as a species, but also as we grow, as we learn, as we experience things, it would be of, it would be a disservice to the world if we don't apply that new knowledge to whatever we're doing and evolve. Yeah, right? yeah. for sure. I love how you described it as the in, it's in the DNA of our of our company. I, I love that that visual and and just that feeling. And it's so true. And I think the other thing that is really deeply embedded in in our company DNA and our company culture is this inner commitment that Pua and I have made to each other that we we operate by how we feel mm -hmm. versus what we think yeah. we should do. Okay. And that has guided us so much through our own lives and then also in in the the journey of our business. And you would think that it's actually it would slow the process, right? It's like, okay, we have to both feel that this is <laughs> this feels good in order to move forward. Yeah. Like that's going to make everything take forever, right? But it's like the best productivity hack ever yeah. because it saves you so much time and energy 
try, doing damage control later. Yeah. So Pua and I, we, that's how we operate. We, we ask each other constantly, how does this feel? Does this feel good? Should, does this feel like the right move for us? And by operating from that place, we save ourselves time and energy. We, and we create a, a, a business and, and a life that we love. And there, and that, and in that message then is what we want to share with other people is that there are times where stuff doesn't feel good right, and right. it's we're not living up here saying <laughs> okay best life ever super positive all the time that's what people say like right. oh you guys are just so positive all the time as if nothing ever feels bad to us and that is so inaccurate we there we have moments and periods of time where we feel terrible yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's that's where we then go inward and we figure out how can we feel better? What would feel better? What is the next best step for us so that we can get back to living our best life ever, whatever that means for us. Now, when you say feeling versus thought, are you talking about like an intuitive nature? Like, like you just feel like you're in the place you should be? Or are you talking about an emotion of like enjoyment? Like, can you dive into that a little bit more and what that actually looks like? Oh, we love this. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, okay. to answer your right. question. <laughs> um, it, it, this is something that, I mean, all living beings are connected to that internal knowing that in, you have, you know, the truth inside of you and every human has this gift. It's not like, oh, this person can tell me by, you know, what I'm supposed to do, or I have to go seek out a medium or something like that. No, like everybody has this, but we have somewhere, somehow, kind of lost touch with it. And we convince ourselves of things every day. Our brain always tells us, no, you should keep your job. Yeah. Your brain tells you, don't let your credit score go down. Your brain tells you, don't take this risk because your brain is trying to help you survive. Right. And it's really important, but rather than a tiger chasing you, it's, you know, all of these, these kind of perceived risks that don't, actually matter as much as we think that they do in the big scheme of things. And it stops us from doing the thing that could actually take our lives and you know, our business and all those things to this incredible place. Yeah, right. Yeah. And there are two, they're totally two different scenarios. You could fail and who cares, right? Failure also is a stepping stone into something amazing if you allow it to be. Right. But when we don't allow ourselves to take a step in either direction because of fear or because our brains are telling us not to, and we're not listening to that voice in our heart, in our gut, that's when we get stuck and we don't feel fulfilled. And we sometimes don't even really know where that feeling's coming from. Right. So that thing that Kimi was talking about where we say, does this feel good? We've trained ourselves to very quickly put ourselves into our hearts and listen to that and take action on it before we let our brains talk us out of it. And it's something, it's like a muscle that you have to condition. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, and I think back to, uh, talking to people, cause I, I talk to people all the time about what are your dreams? What are your visions? What are the ideas that you have? And it's amazing to me whether the person believes in a God or not a God, they always use the same terminology that I feel like I'm walking in what I was created to do. And so I, mm. I completely think that's like what you're saying here is it's, it's, it's part of us. It's like this awareness to like when we're operating in the places we were meant to, when we're operating in our strengths and our abilities, all of a sudden, even the hard things become much more joyous and become much more of a process that we can work through to get to the better days or to, to celebrate the amazing breakthroughs and exciting things that are happening because we're walking in this purpose. Yes. Amen. <laughs> you know, one of the things that, that really stands out, whether it's at the beginning when you shared or throughout what you've said so far, which I think is so powerful is that right now it seems like more than ever before we need people who are willing to impact the world. They're willing to walk into like their purpose and, and really step into that place because uh, there's just a lot of bad things. But I love the perspective you're taking because so often it's what were we fighting against um, and it's this noise of like, this is bad and that's bad. And there's a lot of bad stuff right now. Um, but on the flip side, you guys seem to approach it from the standpoint of saying, 
if we're doing what we're supposed to, if we're doing what we're our, our best life ever, ever is supposed to look like, if we're walking in that, we're so focused on changing the world in a positive way that we're not worried about the negative so much, but worried about just doing what we're supposed to do and really impacting the world in a positive way. Is, is that a fair assessment? Am I misreading that? No, oh, absolutely. And think about the way that when you are living your purpose, when you're doing what lights you up, even when it doesn't make any sense, when you're vibrating at that level and you basically are giving others the permission to do the same. And that's the ripple effect that we get so excited about seeing because it, it opens you up to this whole new world of possibility. And it's a place where, you know, the, the old paradigm is, um, that there's a lot of, like you're kind of operating from, um, from a place of lack or that there's not enough or that you have to do things a particular way. And we live in such a cool, amazing time yeah. where, <laughs> right, with technology, right. we're like, no matter what it is that excites you, you can find an audience <laughs> that yeah. likes the same thing or that vibes with that. And so it, it's, um, it's really a remarkable time. And again, it is, it's like, I kind of just see it like pop corning you know yeah. like when one per one one person is like heating up it's like everybody around begins to heat up and then pop 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 the world just elevates in its own consciousness and so i know that's getting kind of out there but imagine imagine all the people that then you know they see somebody else doing something amazing and inventive and then they think wow i can pursue this thing and do my thing that's amazing and inventive and that's how that's how illnesses will be cured that's how uh, new awareness uh, on a global level will be achieved it's really really powerful and it's something that we can all help with by simply doing what excites us like how cool and simple is that totally and I, I think there's, I, you alluded to this this era that we're in where there's just a lot of fear. Yeah. But yeah, there's just a lot, there's a lot going on on the global stage. Yeah. I mean, the, the entire world is going through its, its challenges. And for us to be in a place where, and a time really where you can operate a business from anywhere for anywhere. You can reach people all over the world and and really create the healing that's necessary by unifying as humanity almost and and giving people that individual power where you don't have to rely on someone else for your own abundance, your own health, your own wealth. You can take control of that and and, you know, be as wealthy and abundant as you want to be and share as widely as you want to share that's powerful. And that releases the fears that are kind of coming up for people. You know, will I have my social security? Yeah. Where, like, are we going to war? What, what can I do to help? You know, there are all of these, all of these things that people feel very helpless about. And when we are able to create a system and a business and a lifestyle that allows you to, as Kimmy said, create this ripple effect across the world, that's when we start the healing and start to elevate as humans united. It's really cool. Yeah, it really is. And, and I love that you brought up the fact that you, we live in a time in which you can work from anywhere to anywhere. Uh, and you can create your own uh, businesses, wealth, whatever that looks like. And you guys are big into creating tribe and creating movement. Um, tell us a little bit about how you utilize uh, technology maybe, or social media or whatever that is for you, uh, to create this tribe, this movement around the message that you're really, uh, believing in and, and communicating to the world. Sure. Uh, we love this question. And I, I will say that I think that, um, as many of us do, Tech, as many of us have, have these days, it's like technology can be complicated, yeah, right? It yeah. can it can either feel like it's it, we're in charge of it and it's awesome and it's leading great things, or sometimes we can feel like it's running us. <laughs> and so a lot of the coaching that we do is helping people to 
really get clear about how to leverage technology in a way that uh, it serves you, but that it doesn't, you, you're not becoming a slave to it. So yeah. for us, um, we, we love what well, we love um, building communities. So we have a Facebook group that we love communicating with and connecting with there. Um, of course, we um, will we'll do video, but I, with video too, that for us <laughs> is sometimes out of our comfort zone and we have yeah. to uh, stretch and expand in order to to do our live videos and things like that. But it is a really fun way to connect with a wide audience. Of course, we have our podcast, which is another really cool technology. We look at our podcast as this uh, little school that we've created where we get to choose our teachers. <laughs> and so it's been a way for us to expand our own learning and and share, share you know, with our tribe, our growing tribe, um, new insights, different, different ways that people are creating and living their best life ever. Uh, so we love technology, but I, I do want to say that we have really clear boundaries that we've set up around technology so that it doesn't we don't feel like it's con, you know, over consuming our lives and taking us under. <laughs> so for example, we make sure that we start and finish our day unplugged as okay. much as possible. Yeah. Uh, we like to batch content, which is a little productivity uh, hack that yeah. we like to share yeah. um, so that you're not feeling like you constantly are being pulled out of the present moment by feeling that you have to like, oh my gosh, I have to capture this right now. I have to share this right now. So are there ways that you might be able to batch content so that you can be more present? Because as we know, presence is a really powerful way to increase your overall fulfillment and enjoyment of your life. And so it's finding that balance between uh, leveraging technology, but not letting it run you. Yeah. Technology, I feel like is very polarizing for people. Yeah, for sure. They either they're like all about it. They're all over their phone all the time. Or they're like, I hate my phone. I'm going to go get a flip phone I'm done with iPhone Androids. And it, it, I mean, I get it because if you aren't aware of some of the things that you can do to, and, and strategies to put in place to leverage your technology and have it work for you rather than have it like continue to just reel you in like a snake. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, so, you know, do, alternate or not alternate, but, um, turn off your notifications yeah. on certain things. Right. Or, um, maybe if you're really controlled by that little red number, I know I am, I hate that thing. So unless <laughs> it's really important, like pretty much my text messages and Slack are the only two things that I leave that on. Yeah. And, and that alone alleviates a lot of stress. So it's up to us to regain control of technology so we can fall back in love with it and allow it to enhance our lives rather than, you know, it be this super polarized love-hate thing. Yeah, and, and I, I want to broaden this a little bit further. One of the things that you've said uh, on different things I've seen from, from you, you is that uh, we need to stop the hustle. And hustle is the buzz phrase right now. It's like, get on your side hustle, get on this hustle. You got to hustle. You got to, what is it about hustle that you don't like? And why do we need to stop the hustle to really succeed? <laughs> oh my God. If I could stand up on my chair right now, do I would. It. <laughs> I would if, it, if it didn't make a whole ton of noise. <laughs> we hate, we hate the hustle, man. So, okay. We don't hate the hustle, but we, we hustle kind of, it, it really resonates that feeling of like sleep when you're dead. Uh, you know, you got to work for your money. You got to work for your leads. You got to work for your clients. And when we find ourselves in alignment and really operating from a place of love and joy, we're able to then attract the people mm -hmm. to us. We can attract the abundance to us. We can attract the, you know, or as we were talking about earlier, we can feel into things instead of forcing them. Okay. Uh, and the hus hustling, at least to me, it feels a little bit forceful. So we're not saying just sit back, relax, and just let things come without any work at all. Um, but we, we don't necessarily believe that you should just grind it, grind and grind and grind because that pulls you away from living your best life ever. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it also brings to mind this sense of 
constantly chasing and and being so forward mm. focused and just like driving driving yeah. driving without those moments of of just sitting back and reflecting and going within and as we shared before about that the difference between operating from our head and operating from our heart uh hustle often comes from the head it's like i got to go get this i got to go do this i got to go here i got to and you know, what is this person doing? And what is that person doing? I got to hustle as hard as they are, right? There's a lot of <laughs> comparison right. that starts coming right. in. And yeah. we have so much wisdom and calm <laughs> within ourselves that we can tap into, where then we can just, it's like the ebb and the flow that people crave, right? People come to us all the time saying that they, they want more, I need more balance. I need more balance in my life. And we often find that people feel like they need more balance because they're tipped so far <laughs> into the hustle yeah. forward focus drive mode that they don't have that sense of fulfillment in the present moment, that, that peace, that calm. So when people are seeking balance, they're seeking usually a little less overwhelm, a little less busyness, a little less hustle. And you've probably heard now people are talking more and more about work-life integration instead of work-life right. balance. And right. that really is that sense of coming from a place of alignment so that you're, you're choosing to do things not out of this hustle, hustle, you know, busy, uh, I got to get more stuff done mode, but I'm going to get the right things done. I'm going to do what feels right for me. So I think it's the, I think there is a, a place for it. And there are still the seasons where we might be in a little bit of a more of a hustle mode, perhaps when we're getting things off the ground, or we have some type of deadline we're trying to reach. But as an overall lifestyle, it really isn't sustainable. And I think too, the there's, we, we talk a lot about working smarter, not harder. Yeah. And so that work when you work hard you're you're in that hustle because you're just you're pushing to get the things done that need to get done right or to hit your numbers hit your goals and while all of those things can be important there are ways to make the process so joyful that it doesn't feel like a hustle anymore yeah, yeah. so it's not really about not doing the work it's about creating the systems and designing the processes so that the work is fun right. and people are going to be like, you're crazy because there's work <laughs> that I do that I hate and I have to do it. Right. And that can be true to an extent, but even then it just takes a little bit of time and like reassessment. As Kimi said, take it, just stop for like an hour and use that time to reassess, do some planning and see, is there a better way to do this? Is there an easier way? Can I outsource? Can I automate? Can I delegate this to somebody? Because those tiny shifts can take us from a mindset of hustle just to a mindset of like, just, you know, get it done, but with joy. I don't know. It's kind of tr tricky to explain in words, at least it is for me right now, but does that feel different? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I think a good follow up question for you on that then is maybe what what's an example for you where you were just kind of feeling like you were grinding it out and you just said, "Hold it, no, not going to do this anymore. Going to shift my thinking here. Whether it's outsourcing it, whether it's going, well, this just doesn't matter." Uh, what's an example maybe for you where that was like that? I really want Kimi to answer this for our social media. For our okay. social media. Cause that, yeah. Cause that was a, that was a grind for, for me you. Oh, you should before. share about it then. <laughs> no, no, no. But you, because we didn't have the system. Uh, now you okay. have the, yeah. All right. Okay. So, okay. Let's, let, let's talk about, let's talk about hustle when it comes to social media. And okay. I know that that was a, it, it, it has been a sticking point for us in the in the past. And I think a lot of that comes from this idea that with social media too, like you, you have to be keeping up, right? There's a lot of external pressure right. in yeah. terms of, especially what, what large organizations might be doing with their social media because they have whole social media teams. And so this is an area in our own business where we've been really working on figuring out ways to bring the joy back to, to social media and, um, and take some of the, the hustle out of it. And again, 
again to to still be in integrity where we are living our best life ever and we're not constantly being taken out of the present moment. So uh, I shared a little bit of, about um, batching content. So that has been a yeah. huge, a huge uh, game changer for us where now the way that we do it is we'll spend some time when we're feeling excited and, and we coach our clients on this too, and it is transformative. So instead of feeling like every day you have to sit down and be like, be creative on demand, you know, because, okay, I'm trying to be consistent. So I have to post every single day and I have to, <laughs> I have to be super creative every single moment. And it feels, right. we, it, it's very defeating, right? Because yeah. there's an ebb and a flow to our creativity, like anything else. And so we suggest that uh, you know, you can sit back and when those moments of inspiration come, instead of creating a little bit of content, create as much as you can in that moment or create these blocks of deep work time when that energy is flowing and then capture it. And then you can load it up. So now there's technology and this is a great way you can begin to outsource some of this stuff, either by leveraging, certainly you could leverage a, a virtual assistant or somebody to, to load all this stuff up for you uh, so that you can sit back and then go and do whatever it is until inspiration, the muse uh, strikes again. Uh, <laughs> or you can use great tools, right? Like Planoly or Later, uh, some of these Instagram scheduling tools that are, and Meet meet Edgar, Hootsuite, like, there's so many nah, really yeah. powerful tools out there that allow you to schedule things out so that you can ride inspiration when it comes and also meet that goal of uh, consistent engagement, right? Without it taking away from the present moment. So uh, yeah, so that's one thing uh, I think that we found a lot more joy with our social media now that we're, we're batching it and leveraging technology. Love that. She does a really awesome job. Kimi does all of our social media. It's, uh -huh. it's incredible. I hate it and I just <laughs> sit there in awe. Can I say, I, I want to add something here because this brings up this brings up something I think that is really fun in our company and another 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 bit of our, our a peek into our DNA. <laughs> and, yeah. and that is that Pua and I totally delight in uh, making each other's lives easier. And okay. this is a really great question. No, any relationship that you have in your life. If you operate from a place of how can I make this person's life easier? It leads to yeah. such a joyous connection. And so, right. So yeah. whether that's a significant other, a friend, a business partner, that don't we just want our lives to be easier? <laughs> like how many times do we right. say that? Right. And so it's yeah. the ultimate gift that we can give somebody else is to alleviate some of that stress, some of the, uh, the weight that might be on them, especially if it's something that doesn't, uh, cost us much energetically. Right. So for me, I, I love social media, but I'll tell you what, I love it even more knowing that it makes Pua's life easier for me to take it on. And that yeah. she does things like that for me too. There's things that I'm like, Oh my God, like really like the back end of a WordPress <laughs> website makes me want to just curl up in a ball and she she does it so beautifully and gracefully and with joy and i i bet you if you asked her the fact that it makes me not feel like i have to curl up in a ball it adds to the the pleasure of the of the whole experience too so i don't want to put words in your yeah, mouth it's but. true <laughs> No, so it. it's this whole uh, <laughs> surprise and delight culture that we have, and we extend that to our community, right? To to the people in our program, to our tribe. We we ask ourselves the question frequently: How can we how can we make their lives more delightful? How can we make their lives easier? And it's it's a powerful question to ask yourself on a daily basis, a weekly basis. We love we're big fans of weekly planning. This is something that we've done. Uh, since the beginning of our business and something we've talked about a lot. And it's just sitting down every week and asking yourself, uh, asking yourself a really simple question like, okay, I, I'm proud of last week. How can I make this week easier and better? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so That's simple, so, so huge. And it's kind of aligned with the hustle thing too, right? It's, yeah. yeah. It's that hustle is hard and whatever solutions you come up with are easier. So like one of the things that people hustle 
like the most on that we've heard is leads. It's like, okay. you got to find your leads. You got to, you got to hustle for your leads. <laughs> you got to badger all these people until they just give you their money. Cause they want you to leave them alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not like, yeah. God, I, you know, you just got to hustle for your money, hustle for your leads. And something that it's, you know, we live in this time again, where you can put systems in place and never has, have to hustle for a lead again and find them because they'll find you. There, there are, you know, things like Facebook ads, which are the most powerful targetable ads I've ever seen on the planet. And all you have to do is put a little bit of money there and let the leads come in, right? Yeah. yeah. Then all you do is have a conversation or be more yourself, let them fall in love with you or out of love with you, right? Because if they aren't vibing on the same level that you are, they may, most likely won't be happy with your service. So you got to be okay with letting them go and know that more people who do resonate with you will come in and it again, like make your life easier and your business partner's life easier, your client's life easier. Like it's, it really is kind of a crazy, simple question that can totally <laughs> flip your world upside down. Right. Right. And, and uh, I love that you talked about your partnership of how you guys work. And I completely agree with that philosophy. I think it's such a powerful thing. If we choose to love the other person, put their needs in front of ours. And if both people or your team is doing that for each other, it just makes an environment that's pretty powerful. I love that. And and I love the whole philosophy of scheduling and, and building tools and systems that really work for you. Um, you have some great resources around these kind of things. You have a checklist. You have some online courses. Tell us about them. Yes, definitely. Well, we, we as you can hear, we get really excited talking about all of this stuff. So it makes perfect sense that we have a podcast. <laughs> so uh, yes. we, you know, we love, we love our podcast. It's actually our second podcast and, and that's been a journey in itself too. And as we shared, we've learned so much from our guests and also uh, we riff a lot and, and are constantly asking uh, ourselves, how can we uh, serve our audience and, and share share things that will help make their lives easier. We like to share all about our, our productivity hacks and our, our business building hacks. And so we have a, we have a lot of fun. It's really, um, it's uh, such a fun piece of our business. And then uh, on our website, bestlifeever.buzz, we have a super fun free checklist for our five secrets for uh, building a badass online business. And it gives a, a really, um, it really kind of sums up what we've shared here today in terms of uh, creating, really just being so authentically yourself and getting clear about how you want to serve, who you are, who your people are, so that you can magnetize uh, people that um, that are the right fit. And that's so important in uh, building a business, we feel, in this day and age. Because if your, if your bigger mission is to live your best life ever, then doesn't that mean you want to be working with people that are your tribe, yeah. right? And so... For yeah. Sure. So if we're out there and we're hustling for clients that aren't aligned with us, it makes our work a lot less enjoyable because they, we have to do again, more damage control. Probably we have to do more customer service and it's just so fun and joyous to work with people that are your people. And so we're really on a mission to help people to do that in their own businesses. Cause man, is it fun. We'll be right back with Kimmy and Pua to do our rapid fire questions questions. You have big ideas and dreams, but you don't know where to start. Why not start over at jumblethink.com slash guide to download the two free guides that we're offering right now to you, our listeners. The first guide will help you know when you have found your dream. And the second guide will help you in the process of overcoming the unknown. Both guides are completely free. So swing on over to jumblethink.com slash guide. That's jumblethink.com slash guide to download your free guide. Now let's jump into our rapid fire questions with Kimmy and Pua, founders of Best Life Ever. Kimmy and Pua, are you ready for rapid fire questions? Yeah. Oh yeah. This is going to be so much fun. This is probably one of my favorite parts of the podcast. So the first question, let's, let's get this rolling, is what is one tip you would give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Buzz. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz <You're good>. Go. <laughs> I just wanted to buzz. Um, so we alluded to it a little bit earlier, but 
we and we'll just say her name because this woman is amazing and our friend Kale Friedrich she gave us this tip and we talk about it all the time if somebody doesn't know what they want to do but there's a little fire inside of them screaming at them that there is something in this world that they're meant to be doing ask yourself what breaks your heart mm. and the answer to that is often at least a clue into what your soul is meant to be doing in your life at this moment and it doesn't have to be forever but right now that's really what's speaking to you love that the next question is what is one change you would like to see in the world wow one change you'd like to see in the world uh more belly laughing <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Seriously, people just take themselves way too seriously. These, and it's, it's right. So that's what I like to see more belly laughing. What a good answer. What do you want your legacy to be? I actually think about this a lot. Okay. Because it, people, we talk, we talk about it to others, and it's a way for us to coach them on their mission statement. So we talk mm -hmm. about it in our course and in their offer itself. Okay. Um, and when people feel stuck, we ask them, "What you know? What do you want your legacy to be? What is it that you are looking to?" Uh, be remembered by. And it's funny because when I listen to our course modules, I get stuck here because I, there are so many things that we hopefully do for people. Um, and it always is boiled down to something that it's so simple that I'm like, that can't be the answer. <laughs> but I really just, I hope that we're remembered as the people who helped to heal the world by creating an army of humans living their best life ever. And that's it. And it, because it, whatever that means to you is different from what it means to the next person, but happy people means a beautiful world. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. Yeah. At least for me, I don't want to put words in Kimi's mouth, but. Oh, absolutely. And to add to that, I, I think that we just want to be remembered. <laughs> like our legacy is that we've helped people to remember their infinite potential and whatever that means for them, because we really believe that everybody is so their, their, their potential is infinite. Their power is infinite. And if we're even able mm -hmm. to help one person tap into that, it's so meaningful to us. And to add to the, the piece about the legacy, as we were sitting here thinking, I just was like, wow, the fact that we're, we have so our podcast out there, uh, all this digital media out there in the world, our program, it's really meaningful to me personally to have my kids be able to access all of that as they grow up in the world and when I'm long gone. Like that is so cool. What a cool world that we live in where we can leave behind this. I know it sounds scary to leave behind a digital trace, like it depends what you're doing out there, <laughs> but it's, it's yeah. also really, really powerful. And I, to have all of the writing, all of the speaking, all of the things that we've shared out there in a format that can be consumed by generations to come is a trip mm -hmm. and really, yeah. really cool. And something to think about as, if you're at that place where you're like, oh, I don't know. I'm a little scared to do a live video. I'm a little scared to do this or that. <laughs> let it drive you and let it excite you that it's going to, it's like a, a little piece of you that you get to share with the world and your children and their children. It's, it's such a cool time. Where do you find inspiration? Where do we not find it? I know. I was like, everywhere. <laughs> Is that a boring answer? It. It's no, everywhere. I mean, no, I, the, the reason I asked this question uh, is that uh, when we had our big agency and we had a lot of employees on our team, we would talk about this a lot. And it was interesting to see who on our team thought what, uh, because some people were like, what do you mean? Where do I find inspiration? They didn't know how to answer that question. And then other people would just go on and on about like, a design thing about something really subtle and uh, something that they walked by that day and how that design element just inspired them. Mm. And, and for me, I, I end up on the spectrum where I'm like, I can find inspiration if I walk like two, uh, two feet in front of me, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere around me, there's always something to inspire. So that's where this question was actually birthed was from that, that issue mm. in our team. Yeah. Love that. I think we, uh, <laughs> you and us are cut from the same cloth. <laughs> I mean, I, 
Okay, so there's a, there's an answer forming in my brain, but there's I don't know how it'll come out of my mouth, but we could try it. <laughs> um, but at least for me personally, I, I really believe that depending on what lights you up, you can literally be inspired by by anything, as you said. Um, and what really specifically triggers me are the stories of people that don't get, you know, they don't have a lot of publicity, they don't have a lot of PR. Uh, it's, and I think Facebook now with the viral video trends and all of that, there Facebook is exposing these kinds of people to the world. But there are people right. out there every day doing incredible things and all it takes is a conversation and so mm. to me i find inspiration in connecting with other people and you know a great example of this is there's a couple that we met at the co uh, co-working space that we work out of and you know we had been working there together with them and not together but they were there at the same time as we were for months before we spoke with them yeah. turns out they are, you know, they, they live all over the world. They're wow. totally, you know, location independent. They just go wherever their heart calls them. Amazing humans. They came on our podcast and yet we'd never know if we didn't reach out and, and start a conversation. So for me, inspiration comes from conversation. What is one book that you think every dreamer or entrepreneur should read and why? Start by John Acuff. It's pretty much... And that's all it is. It's about starting and not, and kind of seeing past the fears that keep us from starting whatever it is that we want to start. Cool. I hadn't heard of that book, so I'll have to check that out for sure. Then what is one tool that you find significant for the success of your business? <laughs> I was just going <laughs> to say a tool. Uh, you guys all yeah, got to find I, yourself a Kimi. Yeah. <laughs> She's my, Pua is my greatest hack for sure. And I would say the other tool is for me, quiet time. Okay. It's just time with nothing. So it's like my, my sassy answer, right? Is like the best tool is nothing, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is so powerful just to, as, as we've shared a lot about is to just sit and be quiet with your own being for mm. at least five minutes a day, like five minutes a day could absolutely change your life. Well, maybe this question then is is redundant. The next question would be, what is one habit you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? Yes, <laughs> it, it would be that. <laughs> it would be it would be finding quiet time in my usually at the beginning of the day, or at the end of the day, or both, or just throughout. But we're not um, yeah, just creating a little bit of white space mm. each day has been so invaluable, especially, especially as we grow. And I think this is one thing to know that as an entrepreneur, as your business grows, then so does the noise of the outside world, right. right? You'll get more ideas, more connections, more opportunities, more notifications, and it becomes even more and more critical to go within to get some quiet and some respite from that, but to also reconnect constantly to what is true for you and do that inner check every single day and connect to your truth, not the world's truth, but your truth. And it can only be done by finding some quiet uh, from all the noise, unplugging just a little bit. Well, then maybe this question is also redundant. <laughs> <laughs> How do you start and finish your day? <laughs> oh, we love this one. It's been quite a theme lately. Um, so, okay, we did an interview for a magazine. Yeah. And one of the questions was, what's your morning routine? So okay. we went on this whole string. We did it on our podcast. We did it in our Facebook group. And so this answer, you can cut all this out if you want, but this answer is very polished. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but they're, it's different for both of us. So uh, I, I have a morning routine. And first of all, I really just want to say that I don't do this every day. And I think that's important because I judge people I, or I used to, I used to judge people so much when they would say my morning routine is I wake up at 430 and I have my tea and then I run 10 miles and then I meditate. And I'm like, no, you don't. I don't believe you. And you know, whether, whether they do or not, that's up to them. Um, but I really just want to say that I'm not a perfect human. So that I don't do this every day, but my day is always a little smoother when I get to this. And 
Uh, so I have three M's that I do every morning when I get to them. Okay. Uh, and it's movement. So, you know, pretty much the first thing that I do, I wake up, I brush my teeth, and then I try to move my body. Lately, it's just been a walk around the block, but um, sometimes it's a workout. Sometimes it's you know, some push ups, but any kind of movement helps to bring me out of that sleepy mode and mm. into the into a little bit of action. And it, it helps me to get my brain firing uh, movement, uh, meditation. So, this is another one that I like to talk about because I don't actually follow any sort of meditation guidelines. Okay. Um, and I found that when I was kind of uh, experimenting with meditation, I was doing a lot of guided meditation and, and apps. And my personality is that I don't like to follow what other people <laughs> tell me to do. Right. So to, to think about whatever this person was telling me to think about drove me nuts. Yeah. And the other thing that drove me nuts was trying to not think about anything. Mm. And so I call it meditation, but for me, it's just, you know, two to five minutes of quiet where I just let my mind go wherever it will go. And I usually come up with some fun ideas during this time. So it's really important to me because that's really when I get to be creative. Uh, and then somewhere in that, I'll set an intention for the day so that that last M is mindset. Mm. And okay. it's just what is... What is my mindset for the day? Where do I want my thoughts to be focused? That's it. For me, I'll just tell you what I don't start and end my day with, and that is email or social media. Oh, okay. That's it. Everything else is pretty fluid and flexible, but I do not, I make it a really strong point not to start my day or end my day with either of those things and the way that it can <laughs> spike your cortisol right, levels, right? right. <laughs> I need to get better at that. It's, oh my gosh, it's a, it's hard for me to, it's like really takes a lot of, a lot of intention yeah. for me. And, uh, I, we equate it to gambling, yeah. right? Like you, you don't know, like there could be something really cool or really not so cool in your email. And that's why we tend to want to open it because we don't know <laughs> what could be there, but just at least not starting the day or ending the day in that energy. It's like never worth the gamble. Right. Right. And I've learned that by, I've learned it the hard way by not doing it. <laughs> If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you would be doing? Crying. <laughs> <laughs> Not living our best life ever. Yeah. I'd be sad. I'd be really yeah. sad. What is one dream you're still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Travel. Yeah. More travel. As we wrap up today's episode, what is one last thought you want to leave us with? If you are listening to this, just know that you're listening to this for a reason and Pua and I have been, we, we feel so blessed. We've had amazing mentors, amazing teachers, and we've had each other along this journey. And so we want to just let you know that, um, find, find that, find that around yourself, find somebody that will be your cheerleader and know that you're listening to this for a reason. And we are your cheerleader right now. If you're trying to you feel this thing in your soul, you're like, man, I know this is in me. I know this is what I want to do. I have all these yeah, buts that are coming from my head. Do whatever it takes to surround yourself with people that can help, that can support you, and that can just cheer you along. And we are right here cheering you along because the time is mm. now. The time is now. If you're waiting for a sign, this is your <laughs> sign. The fact that you're listening to this podcast about big dreamers, <laughs> right, trying to yeah. live their best life, like that, that is your sign. Let that be the sign. If you're waiting for a sign, let the fact that you're waiting for a sign mm, be the sign. <laughs> And go for it. Love it. Kimmy, Pua, it's been so much fun having you on. I, I really appreciate you sharing your story and giving us insights into uh, your world, but more importantly, uh, inspiring us to live the best life ever that we can live. Uh, we really appreciate it. I know everyone listening has been inspired. I know I have. So thanks again for taking time out to, to be with us. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Once again, we want to thank today's guests, Kimmy and Pua, for taking time out to share their story and give us some insights and practical steps we can apply to our lives of chasing those big ideas and dreams and changing the world around us. So now it's your turn. It's your turn to go create the best life ever. I love that Kimmy and Pua named their company Best Life Ever. And 
And just like they have, you can create your best life ever. If you have a dream, if you have a big idea and you're waiting for someday, the perfect day, maybe you're waiting for when you have the right money or when you have more time or when it's right to start that new career. Well, today is that day. It's the perfect day to start creating the life you want to live, create the world you want to live in. So now you need to make some actions. I hope that this episode has encouraged you to take those actions, to give you some steps that you can take and give you some ideas of how you can begin making that dream and idea a reality. Thanks for listening. Until next time, get out there, dream big, and change the world around you. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant dans quelques mois. Lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.